Hello, I'm Daniel Wolfert. I live off-grid in northern Arizona, and this is my series on off-grid ingenuity. This is part two of supplemental water supply, and here you can see that back by my cabin I have some more of these water cubes, and these ones are encased in wooden boxes. And the reason for that is twofold. First, but least important, is the fact that it's just more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. But secondly, you'll see that there are some real benefits to doing it this way. Let's move in a little bit closer and you'll see some of the other innovations that I've got going on here. Here I got a hold of a plastic sink at a resale store and I just mounted it, took the legs off, mounted it on some cinder blocks. And uh, you can see I've got uh, some cleaning supplies in there, a little brush, and a bucket because I don't always want to fill the sink all the way up. Sometimes I just want to wash my hands. Mainly I use this for gardening, this water for gardening, and for uh, for washing up. So uh, how do I get the water down into the down into the bucket? Well, here's a real simple solution that I found. This is a leftover piece of that uh, downspout, that plastic downspout material. I just uh, put it, hold it right on there like that. Hit the um, lever. Hit the spigot lever and the water gushes out of there. I can fill a bucket in about seven seconds flat and I can fill the sink up very quickly too. And so uh, there may come a time when I may decide that I want to put a spigot on there, a faucet type spigot, but for right now this is working for me. Taking a look at the actual side of the box here, this has been water sealed with waterproofer and uh, it's actually a very simple construction. It didn't take me a long time to do, probably about a day on each box, and uh, made from very inexpensive wood. Up here you can see my eaves trough on the cabin, up there, and uh, my very simple downspout. And I have to say I'm not really going to recommend these plastic downspouts. This one's been up here for about two years, and it's developed a lot of cracks and leaks from the winter cold and uh, the wind blowing out and that sort of thing, so it's soon going to be replaced with a heavier metal one. But for a simple solution, you know, I had to give it a try. Uh, it was very easy to connect that up to my water system. Up here, what we have is we have just a, the old dollar store pitcher. And uh, you can see that once this uh, tank fills up, the water can just very easily spill out of here. It hits this board down here and is drained down the sides of the water cube. Uh, inside here, we just pop this right out and uh, pop this right out. And inside here you can see I've got a little filtration basket and there is a little strain, vegetable strainer inside there that I removed the handle from. And then on the outside of that a uh, knee-high nylon stocking to catch whatever the strainer doesn't catch. And that fills up with bugs pretty fast. I have to empty that, you know, uh, after when it's in, during the rainy season I have to empty that quite often. Because apparently a lot of itsy bitsy spiders like to live in <laughs> water spouts. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna pop that right back in there like that. Pop that right back there in that, and we're ready to collect water. Now, part of the design of this is, you can see there's a little gap right here. Part of the design of this is that there is an inch or more of space between the inside plastic water cube and the outside uh, wooden box. And uh, the water, I mean, the, the hot air that might build up in there can just flow right out through these little gaps. And uh, I've actually got a tarp uh, on top of it too. And as I lift this up, a whole bunch of cool air is spilling out of there because the uh, water tank actually keeps the air between the tank and the wooden box very cool because the water inside that tank stays very cool, even on a hot day like today, uh, where the temperature is expected to reach about 80 degrees. So those are some of my innovations with my uh, water tanks that are next to my house. I'm going to show you my... This, this tank here, as I said, is rainwater collection, and I use it. Uh, I don't use this for drinking water. I could if I filtered it very, uh, very thoroughly, but uh, I have a drinking water tank next to it over there, and we're going to look at that next. Before I do, I'm just going to mention the solar panels. Those are actually going to be featured in an upcoming episode, but uh, look at how nice and easy that is to mount those on the side of the water tank, and the fact that you can uh, access them very easily for cleaning and changing the angle depending upon where the sun is at that time of the year. Uh, it was another little innovation that I, uh, that I really am proud of. And now here is my drinking water tank. 
I always keep this filled with at least 200 gallons of fresh water for drinking. Um, I use this water for my showering and uh, cleaning of dishes, that sort of thing. Anything where I just want to be really sure that the water quality is good. And this water comes from a well. It also comes from the machines in town where you can buy the filtered water. You'll notice that the back side of these tanks is open because this side is always sheltered from the sun due to its proximity to the eave, the overhanging eave on my cabin there, and also the fact that uh, these tanks are facing south. So this enables me to check my water supply and to see how much water I've got in here. From this angle you can also see the airspace that's built in, you know, around the sides of these tanks so that if any hot air builds up in there it can just vent right out the top. And then uh, over here on this drinking water tank you can see I have installed a spigot and uh, when I want some drinking water I just hit the switch right there and then it flows. And I have this little water catchment basin down here so that if I spill any water I can use it for gardening or some other purpose. I don't like to waste water at all. I'm very conscious of uh, keeping enough water on hand at all times just because uh, this is a, uh, a semi-arid climate up here even though we do get a lot of rain during the monsoon season and a lot of snow in the winter um, there are some dry spells that occur in between those two um, where you so you just want to keep a lot of water on hand for your own peace of mind and so that you don't have to be running into town to get water okay so one final note on the cost of this setup I paid about a hundred dollars each for these tanks and then uh, of course they're sitting up on some cinder blocks there's a, a total of 12 of those and uh, they cost about a dollar 25 a piece when I bought them and uh, then the wood that encases these that's about uh, $30 worth of wood. So you do the math, it's about $150 uh, and change to uh, have a nice drinking water and uh, rainwater catchment system that uh, will, keep, will help to keep me clean and happy and uh, enjoy my off-grid lifestyle. So I hope you benefited a little bit from this episode of Off-Grid Ingenuity, and I hope it helps to add to your enjoyment of your living off-grid. Did you have a good day today in your habitat? Yeah, you're such a nice, friendly guy. Yeah, so handsome.